So chapter six is on page 48 of your textbook, 42 of your ring binder. 48 of your textbook, 42 of your ring binder. And literally when you open that, those are the only three pages for this chapter. So it shows how short and easy this chapter is. This is our math chapter though. So if you hate math, we're going to have to get you through it. It's not hard, I promise. Uh, but it's the only time you're going to have to do some math calculations. So this deals with height and weight measuring intake and output. Okay, so first let's start with weight. On weighing a resident, do you think when they come into the facility, they're going to gain weight, lose weight, or maintain weight? Mm -hmm. They're going to probably lose weight. Okay, so they are weighed initially when they arrive at the facility, and that's in the chart. And then approximately once a month, they're going to re-weigh them in order to establish how they're doing. When they are weighed at the facility, the yellow box on page 48 gives the guidelines. Same time of day, same amount of clothing, no shoes on, preferably an empty bladder, so that we are comparing things that are equal to each other. No shoes. If, and no shoes. With shoes. I'm sorry, no shoes. No shoes. But on the skill, that's what I can already say, when we do the skill, you have to have shoes on. Okay? And I know that's going to be crazy. So if you're answering a written test question, the test question is that they should not have shoes on when they're being weighed. If you draw this skill as your measurement skill, you will have your partner putting shoes on to walk to the scale. Okay? Well, again, we'll practice that and you'll have a chance. Now, from the standpoint of weighing, you guys are going to be expected to demonstrate the use of the old, tiny, traditional doctor's scale. Where it has the two bars, the bottom segment is in 20 pound increments. So it'll go 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on. And the top is in one pound increments to 20. And so on. So what you would do is you're going to set the scale to zero, which just means that it's balanced. And there's going to be a pin that sticks out there, and it should be center, okay? just like you would see if you were using a level on the bubble. And you're going to estimate what you think the resident's going to weigh. You're going to have them step up onto the scale, and you're going to first move the bottom segment. So if you think they weigh about 100 pounds, you're going to go ahead and slide this all the way up to 100 and drop it in place. If this pin is up, it means that's not enough weight, they weigh more, and I need to add more. We're not going to start adding the top because otherwise it's going to take too long. We're going to go to 120 and we're going to watch the pin. Let's say it's still up. What are we going to do? We're going to go to 140, and now it goes down. What have you determined now at this point? You're in between. You are now more than 120 and less than 140. So you will bring that back to the 120 mark. There's little grooves or divots in each of these weight segments, and you're going to make sure that the weight drops right into there. And then knowing it was more than 120 and less than 140, I'm going to start adding weight in one pound increments until we are back balanced at the center. So if we get balanced here, we're going to add the bottom, 120, plus 8 is 128, and that's what we're going to record. For the purpose of the state exam, you get to be off by 2 pounds plus or minus, but it's 2 pounds plus or minus of the evaluator's reading. So if she got 128, then you would get credit for any number that you would write 26, 27, 28, 29, or 30 if this was the correct answer. So you do get a two pound plus or minus leeway. Now the most common thing, and I say it on the video as well, you usually don't have any problem watching a balance. The biggest issue is many times they didn't realize it didn't drop in that groove. So if it's not sitting in that groove, you're weight will be off. Okay. So that's going to be your weighing skill. So they can ask you a question on the written test about weighing, which typically comes from that yellow box, or you could draw this as your one measurement skill in which you'll demonstrate the use of that. 
Now, other questions they can ask on the test is what do you do if a resident is bed confined and they can't stand on the scale? Well, you're going to use a bed scale. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of like the big sling where they're going to take a dolphin from SeaWorld and move them. And they roll them on the sling and they suspend it above the bed and they get the weight. The other thing you may see is if they're in a wheelchair, they can roll them onto a platform scale and weigh them. Okay. But what you have to do if you do that is once you get the weight, you have to take them out of the wheelchair and weigh the wheelchair and subtract the amount the wheelchair weighs from the total to be accurate. For right now, for adults, we are still using pounds. We are not using kilograms. Pediatrics is been forced into kgs. We have to do everything in kids in kgs. But adults is still pounds and ounces, so you'll be fine with that. Okay? So everybody understands what you might get from that? All right, the other thing that you could get on the written test, but you will not draw as a skill, is height. Okay. Now, when they get admitted, we're going to take their height. Are they typically going to get taller, shorter, or the same? Shorter. They are going to get a little shorter. Not as drastic as what we worry about with weight, which is very significant to your overall health. But particularly women, our bone density changes, and we will get a little bit shorter in time. But because that doesn't affect our overall health, they won't redo the height. They'll have the height on admission, and they'll leave it alone. So again, if it's nice and easy and they can stand, we're going to stand them up like we would at the doctor's office, put that bar on the top of their head and get the height. If they cannot stand up, we're going to lay them in the bed. We're going to stretch them out the best we can. We're going to take and mark the sheet where their head is. We're going to mark the sheet where their foot is, roll them over, and then measure between the two points. That's about as close as we're going to be able to get to getting the, the height for the resident. You cannot draw this skill, but you can be asked a question on the test related to it. So, super easy. Right? Questions about height or weight? Okay, that wasn't hard math, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so the next one that gets a little more challenging is intake and output. What do you think intake is? <laughs> what you put in your mouth, okay? So, in this case, it's liquids that go in your mouth. Liquids include soup. They include jello, because jello was a liquid before it went in the refrigerator. Ice cream, those are all considered liquids, and that's going to be the oral amount that you take in. You guys will be using that experience with your feeding. So what will happen is the tray will come out for breakfast, and you'll help your little resident, and on the tray it will say, for example, that there's eight ounces of juice and four ounces of Ensure on the tray. It'll tell you what's on there. And you help your resident eat and they drank all of it. Great. That means their intake for breakfast was 12 ounces of liquid. Okay. The output scenario for CNAs is urine. And this is something you won't do much of from a clinical perspective. But if they're monitoring somebody who retains fluid, those who have kidney disease and heart disease, they may ask you to very closely monitor their output either draining the urine from a catheter bag, mm -hmm. having them go to the bathroom in a bedpan or a urinary hat and measuring it that way. But again, you won't have the opportunity to do that in clinical. But again, what we would do is if we were measuring, we would transfer the contents of the urine into a container. The container will be marked. And so if it says seven ounces, then they took in 12 ounces at breakfast and they urinated out seven ounces on that shift. Now here's the catch. They're not going to let you chart it in ounces. They're going to make you convert ounces to cubic centimeters, which is also the same as milliliters. So cc is cubic centimeter, ml is milliliter, and you're going to have to convert it. Now those two words are interchangeable. So if I asked Liliana to put on her pants and I asked Karen to put on her britches, we know that that means the same article of clothing, even though it's two words. That's the same thing with cc's and milliliters. They mean the same thing, even though they're different words. Now, in order for me to be able to convert this, this is what I have to know. Got to have this memorized. One ounce is equal 
to 30 cc's. So you have to know that one ounce is 30 cc's. Some of you are going to be great at math, and you're not going to have to worry. You're going to say, I can do this 30 times 12. I don't have any problem with math. That's 360. Super. Okay. Some of you aren't going to like this math. It's been a while since you had to stack numbers on each other and cross multiply. So maybe for you it would be easier to take the 12, multiply it by 3, get rid of the 0 for a moment, and then just remember to add your 0 back to the answer. Some of you are really going to struggle, and so I gave you a cheat sheet in your ring binder that says 1 is 30, 2 is 60, 3 is 90, 4 is 120, 5 is 150, and so on. So I've given you a printout in your book. I don't care how you get it, okay, but this is the one thing you are going to have to be able to get and do the transfer. Um, two scenarios that you're going to have to do this, primarily in clinical, when they do finish eating, you're going to have to chart this. So even though the ticket came out saying ounces, you are going to have to convert it and you will write that for them on the, the ticket. Now let's say they didn't drink any of the insure. It was on the plate, but they didn't drink any of it. Now what am I going to multiply by 30? Just the 8, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be an exact science. You've got the insure, you know it's 4 ounces, it looks like about half of it. Okay, that's 2. We're okay with that. We're not going to measure out to the drop with that scenario. Um, and so you'll be doing that in clinical, and since you guys are a day class, you'll have breakfast and lunch to be able to practice that opportunity. For the state exam, you will not have an intake practical skill. In other words, they won't have a tray that you do that. You would only be asked a written question. And again, it can be something like, Mrs. Jones was given four ounces of juice, eight ounces of coffee, four ounces of insure. She drank half her juice, half her insure, half her coffee. What did she drink? And then your answers would be in CCs, and it would be multiple choice, and you'd have to do the math on the test. On the output part, again, they can ask you a scenario question. But this is a skill you can draw for your measurement. So like weight, you can draw this skill for measurement. And again, you'll be transferring urine from a bedpan into a container. The nice thing about these containers, and we're going to be playing with them after lunch, is one side is ounces, the other side <coughs> is already marked in cc's. So don't do the math. Don't make it hard on yourself. Just find the line that it's closest to and write your answer down. Okay? And don't get complex about it. Now, on the skill for measuring urine, you get to be off by 25 cc's plus or minus. So again, the evaluator is always right. So if she put 250 cc's of urine in that bedpan for you to do that skill, and you write down 225 <coughs> to 275, any number in that, you are still going to be successful in that skill. So again, this is very fair. It's not complicated. You shouldn't have any problem being successful with that. Okay. Um, so any questions about that? All right. What I will do is I'm going to bring out containers that you guys will look at after lunch. And I'm going to bring out about six different types of containers. We'll have urinals. We'll have cylinders. We'll have bed pans. We'll have urinary hats. We'll have a catheter bag. So you can see some of the different devices that you might be obtaining that urine to transfer. We also will get checked off in that skill this afternoon where we will transfer the urine. We'll go to the bathroom and do that as a bathroom skill. So we'll get that done this afternoon as well. We also need to practice math calculations. So we're going to do a math sheet. Again, we'll do all of this after lunch and um, get you comfortable with that. So that'll kind of be our plan. We'll go ahead and break. And when we come back, we'll get busy with hands-on. Um, I will see you guys back at 1230, 1230, Oh, 50 minutes, okay? You can take longer for lunch, but then we won't get out quite as early. <laughs>